If you're going to pick a cult hero, I think he's number one. I need someone who's just going to run and run and run and run and run. And I think you probably know who I'm talking about. He probably is. We're talking about cult heroes. This this guy is probably the biggest cult hero Manchester United have ever had. I think we still sing his song. He had a great, great relationship with Patrice Evra. And someone, Fergie, said, found it so hard to leave out the 2008 Champions League final. Uh, I have to go for G-Sun Park. <laughs> oh, my I God. Have to do it. I'm I sorry, listeners. Do I don't swear normally, but I, the way you describe it, <laughs> like it's not going to be Tevez. I wish it's Tevez, but it's not going to be Tevez. Nah, nah. He was he was sick in this shirt in this 2010. Yeah. Oh, mate, well. he was unbelievable. Oh he should always score against Arsenal. He should have um, been my wild card, man. Yeah, he should have. I, I can't believe I can't believe he's not been picked so far. Like I, I was I was no, sure we have been so conservative man. with our picks so far, and then we come to our attackers. Look at all the talent we have available. Oh my yeah. days. Also, That's literally why I wore the... this shirt to represent G Sun Park for his amazing last minute goal <laughs> against Wolverhampton Wanderers at home when Rooney was out of the team. He's just a great, a great, a great player. Uh, the exam story is that Rooney learning is he learning Korean swear words or something? Are you teaching him? Mm. Swear words and stuff mm. like that on a training pit, and I just think that just sounds like it's gonna sound weird, but like the, the best fun in training. Like you know, you get <laughs> yeah. different people from different continents. You can't speak each other's language, and obviously, you, you communicate through swear words. I'm just swearing at the English great. referees in Korean as well. Oh yeah, exactly. exactly. Getting away with don't, it. Know what, don't, don't know what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> I just think he was a great, great signing. And again, I think you know, at the start of his career, he's probably seen as another one of those players. People saw him on on the team sheet. Like, oh, for <laughs> God's sake. Yeah. Jason Park, what does he do? This, this, and this. He, he was a linchpin in that team at, at times. What what would give for two or three of him in this squad now as well? Do you know what I mean? Especially in that midfield. And I just think he's a, he's a great player. And I, and if you're going to pick a cult hero, I think he's number one. I mean, you're a big game player. Mm. Big, big game player, man. I mean, left foot, right foot. Play left wing, play right, right wing, play centre mid. He's probably completed the bleep test. Mm. He's probably completed the bleep, the bleep test about 10 times. <laughs> The bleep and test is part of G-Song's warm-up. Remember that. And he, yeah. probably had, he probably had the ear broken sweat doing it. On a, even on a bad day, he was giving you something. Uh, do you know what I mean? He was just... He wasn't flashy. He wasn't a maverick or anything. He was just... You knew what you were going to get with him. And when he played, more often than not, you knew he was going to deliver something. Like, especially in the big game, whether it would be Arsenal or Liverpool in Europe. The first time I'd come across him, he scored against AC Milan for three, And I thought, this guy's a problem. This guy's actually a problem. And I think the season after when I, we went and signed him, he's someone that United fans and me like think that holds like not close to our heart, but we think of like quite fondly. Do you know what I mean? Like he's always like a player that you just don't have anything bad to say. And I think the best thing is that he left on like good terms. Like it wasn't sort of like like sour or like severe ties or anything. It was like he left with like everyone's grace and everyone just wished him well. But basically, I did mention this at the beginning of the podcast. I did say there is a player that I want to talk fondly of in terms of how I would play as a footballer. And all strikers nowadays do what Jason Park did years ago in terms of how to press from the front, how to stop players going forward. Uh, Mark mentioned about how um, he was really good at PSV. He was nominated as one of the best strikers in best forwards in Europe alongside, I'll read out the names, Ronaldinho, Samuel Eto, Andrei Shevchenko and Adriano in 2005. That's how good Park Yusung was uh, at PSV. And we only signed him, remember, even in 2005, for £4 million, which was a steal. Absolute steal. Shout mm-hmm. out Gus Hiddink for bringing right. him from uh, Korea to PSV. And then how AA mentioned before about how he got left out of the final. He put in a stellar performance um, at Old Trafford against... Who was he playing against? Ronaldo was playing in the middle behind Tevez. It was against Zamborotta on the left, wasn't he? Because Nani was on the right. I think... Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think that's what he did. And he was there trying to man-mark Messi as Messi was going on, on the right-hand side as well. So he didn't get to man-mark him at the time, but he was always doubling back on, on you know, Messi. Without Jason Park, we may not even even have got, we may not even have survived going forward into that semi-final second leg as well. And it goes to show how well he was as a squad player, how he could listen to the manager, how he could drop these amazing performances whilst not showing goals and assists. And in this day of everyone comparing attackers through goals and assists, Jason Park was someone who didn't need goals and assists because we as fans, we appreciated him for what he did. I'll always appreciate 
that counter-attacking goal at the Emirates where, I mean, there was a few, but I'm yeah, going yeah. to talk about the one where, not the one he scored, but the one where Ronaldo scored in the Champions League <laughs> semi-final to finish off yeah. Arsenal. And it was him, Rooney and Ronaldo. It's yeah, quintessential yeah. Manchester United counter-attacking against Arsenal. Crazy goal. Especially when Cristiano Ronaldo and Carlos Tevez left the season afterwards in 2010. Everyone remember you'll see this on the lab Bible all the time. Remember this <laughs> with Jesus and part man Mark per- um, Perlo. I hate that because he had games yeah. that season. He had games. He was scoring against AC Milan. He was scoring against Chelsea, he was scoring against Arsenal, he scored the winner against Liverpool as well from across from Darren Fletcher. And again, I'm wearing this kit because this is my favorite kit because he won the 19th uh title that season as well. We overtook Liverpool, and Jesus and Part was a big factor in that early season form that we had with Antonio Valencia being out injured after that horrible injury he got against um, Rangers. Now, shout out to Jason Park. What a guy. He was the Jerusalem factory, everyone on the pitch. And again, that quarterfinal goal, I think he scored the winner, didn't he? Drug the sport to equalise. And then he just scored like a minute or two afterwards and it just made it so much easier. Yeah, yeah. Jason yeah, Park score yeah. as well. And he deserved his flowers as a Man United player and as a Premier League cult hero. <laughs>